Here we go. Good morning and welcome to Gen Ed 500 Fall 2020 online distance learning course. Um, thank you all for coming today. And hopefully um, throughout the course, this will serve as a guide for everybody. And I want to let you know that I'm here to help you to make sure that you're successful um, in the course. And we want to make sure that uh, you have the, also the assistance and guidance that you need for the course. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on how you look at things. Some people, the glass is half empty, some it's half full. Um, you know, we're in this time of COVID in the sense that we now have to do distance learning. Unfortunately, no one's allowed on campus and we have to do all our work remotely. There are some positive things about that, but also some negative things. So the negative things we're not gonna dwell on, but what we will do is we will put things in place to help us minimize the negative things, such as one of the major negatives are that you don't get to see people. There's not a lot of social contact. It's difficult to do groups. Yes, I said it, I'll tell you now, it's very difficult to do groups, but with some work and cooperation, we can overcome those things. Um, so this is the introduction to the course. I'm not gonna read through all of it, but hopefully you had a chance to go through this. This is also inside of eCentennial. This um, walks through the process of uh, the course itself, how to contact me, my office hours, whereby you can just kind of drop in um, through my Zoom or you can just call me or text message me and I'll meet you um, through Zoom right away. This is an introduction to the course. This is for you to make your introductions. So when you go to the discussion board, it should take you right into the discussion. And then you'll go forward here and introduce yourself to everybody else in your particular section. Um, I'm just looking at one of the sections right now. There are five sections that I am teaching and um, you guys will be a part of because I decided to have you all at once. When we do do, when we do have these meetings, we will have them all at once. So you'll be in uh, the same virtual meeting with sometimes not uh, peers from your own section, but uh, within the same overall course. Okay, so on the introduction, like I said, it introduces me to you guys, as well as to the course, as well as to how the course is going to run for the 13 weeks, as well as what you're supposed to do every single week, as well as the course book and an overview. Okay, here's the book itself, so you can see it. You can go to Ashton B. Bookstore to purchase it online. At one point in time, they used to have it on Amazon. Um, I'm not sure if it's still there. Um, I provided the link before, like a couple semesters ago, so I'm not sure if it's still uh, current. If you're having a hard time finding it on Amazon, um, again, it's best to buy it from the bookstore. They will ship it uh, to you, okay? There's also a welcome introduction, getting you to, to uh, just know that we had started the class today and that you should have signed in and walked through the overview. So weekly, I will have a message that will come up here and you'll see a news message for the whole course. I'll give you a quick example of my previous last semester. Uh, here's one in the summer that I did. And you'll notice that every single week on the Monday, there is a message. So this is the last week of class. This was the exam, week, uh, final Zoom call, week 12, week 11, week 10, and so on and so forth. So every week there'll be a message kind of just guiding you as to what you should be doing um, throughout the um, uh, throughout the week, and it gives you a, a kind of an idea as to what kind of work you should be doing, right? So if you're in week you know eight or nine, then again it'll give you all the important things for what you have to do for that particular week. Okay. So this weekly check-in, you should be checking in Monday nine or ten. I'll try to get it up first thing in the morning. Sometimes I sleep in a little bit or I have it scheduled. Some of them. If it doesn't show up right away that first thing on the, uh, the Monday morning, just check back throughout the Monday. It'd definitely be posted. Um, or if you miss it, come back. You'll see it's always there. And you can always see what, uh, what we're doing from, uh, from week to week. It just serves as a, as a guideline. Um, I haven't instituted a checklist. It's something I want to do and I may add throughout the semester um, of having a checklist for, for the course. Um, one sec, let me just go back to the... I'm going back to our section here, the, uh, the, the, the home page, we call it. This home page um, is of the section that you're in. It has your news. So every week you come here to check. Once you've checked what the news are, sometimes there's links to take you into the section 
Um, sometimes there's not, but you to come to the content section and then find the week of content that we're in. Let's just say, for example, week one, which is today. And every week is set up the same whereby there's an overview, a lesson, and then a review. Okay. So anything that's not there is a checklist. What we have done though is we've done for our course orientation a checklist. So at the end of going through these documents, it's just going to check with you to say, have you done all these things to make sure that uh, you're um, staying on top of the coursework that you have to do. I'm just answering somebody that's having some problems. Okay. So these things you'll check off that you've done them. You've done the introduction message. You know what's expected of you. You know how to communicate with me. You know how to use eCentennial. You know what tools are there. You've gone through all the learning in the online format. You've read the first chapter of the book. And, um, you know, you've um, added your first discussion post, which I forgot to add here. I'll add that. Okay, so you see that's added to the checklist if you check in to see what you have to do. And um, uh, once you've checked those things off, it just keeps you organized for the week. Okay, so please go through each of these one at a time. There is the introduction as we, we, we talked about and you already saw it's in the news post. So you read through these things here. Again, there's a link here to the discussion board. Okay, and then you can just use the next arrow in the back arrow here to navigate instead of having to go back through the main menu, which you can do here if you want. This is the main menu, but right now we're in the subsection of course orientation and overview. So we're just going to walk through it one by one by clicking on the arrows at the side here. So you're going to go through this introduction. It's slow today. What's going on? Shoot faster. This is an introduction to the course. This is an introduction video you can watch from uh, from Keisha, our coordinator. Welcome to Gen Ed 500 Global Citizenship. This course is delivered fully online. All course materials, resources. Okay, you can watch that at your leisure. This is expectations, what we expect from you, what you can expect from me. This is the academic integrity module. It just deals with making sure you're not cheating, making sure you're taking care of, um, you know, your, your moral values around school and education. It's important to know um, what's expected of you. So it's just a quick um, module as I'm asking some questions and going through some things on plagiarism and academic integrity and cheating and, and so forth. This is a guide to Centennial's technology, eCentennial, as well as um, Bright, as I desire to learn, this is the tool we use and explain some other tools you might see us use throughout the course. Okay? If you're having any problems with technology, please message the help desk. And, and then um, for tests and whatnot, you can message me as well after, but first, your first line of defense, so to speak, with challenges or problems is to message the eCentennial help desk. There's a student hub, which is um, inside of uh, the main area of the school um, in block um, uh, C. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we can't go into the school right now. So it's just showing you where the different things are. This is the hub, which is, has all the registration and technology. There's a library over in the L block. There's student services downstairs. Um, but again, this is all online now so that you can uh, contact any one of these if you have any challenges. Anybody that needs any counseling services, you can contact them. If you have any challenges and you do want to speak to me, um, I am trained as a counselor. I'm also trained in safe spaces for LGBTQ community. I'm trained in, in racism and, and race relations, um, as well as um, uh, I'm a life coach. 
So if there's any challenges or problems and you want to talk to somebody, you can definitely reach out to me. It doesn't matter any time. I'm here for you guys to help you out. You can send me a text message. Obviously, if I, if I don't answer, it's because it's late at night. But I've had a student contact me before at, um, you know, at really weird hours having a, a challenging problem. And I was able to just talk to them and be that friendly voice and then also refer them on to proper services so they can get assistance as they need. Um, so, you know, don't think you're alone. There is help for you. And I'm here to help you more than anything else. Um, the course is not just about being a professor and learning something from you or, or taking a course. It's more about um, who we are as people and individuals in life and also uh, making sure that uh, you, all, you all are successful as much as possible. Okay. Frequently asked questions, questions around the course schedule, when are assignments due, do I need a textbook, which we looked at a second ago, where do I get the textbook from, how much is it, what's my expectations, right, how much work do I need to do each week, that's the big thing. Um, you're going to spend about three to four hours every week in this class, even though it's online, you still have to do the work. There's videos to watch, there's content to read online, there's content to read in your book. We also used to make you guys read articles outside we found is a bit too much so of course we pulled that back but there is quite a bit of work to do weekly so don't think of it as something you can just breeze through you have to put aside the time um, and, and, and make sure you're um, going through the content and you're also checking yourself as to your understanding of the content it's one thing to read something it's another to understand something and why we do quizzes and tests is to is to check your understanding of the material and also see what your thoughts are around a topic area. And the, hence why you wanna make sure you stay on topic because when you get behind, uh, you know, trying to catch up and do a lot of work at once can be pretty daunting. Um, whether you do everything in one day, one sitting, or you spread it throughout the week, it's up to you. I'm the kind of person that I don't like to do everything in one sitting. I'll break my, my days up. I'll do an hour today, an hour tomorrow, an hour the day after. I just find it gives my brain a chance to absorb the material and then I'm able to understand it a little bit better. I also like to make notes, whether those be written notes or text notes. Um, it also helps you to think about what you're actually reading or going through. They say written notes are, are really good. Um, I've done it for years whereby I buy a text book, a dollar um, book at the dollar store, and I usually use that for whatever discipline that I'm doing, and I make notes along the way. Because it helps you to learn something, and it also helps you to focus on the most important parts, um, and your brain tends to leave out the, the, the lesser important part. So when you're going back to study and focus, um, you'll see the things that you felt was important for you to study and you have those things in your notes. And then you can you know, toss the book away or keep it or whatever have you. That's just been my personal learning style. Everybody has their own style and um, it's up to you how you want to go about accomplishing that. This is all about the online and learning environment, which is what we just spoke a bit about in terms of your working style. I won't go through all this again now. You can read this at your leisure. Please do read it though. It really addresses some misconceptions about online courses. It also deals with um, you know, um, challenges with group work as well as face-to-face -face communication. It just gives you an overview again of what to expect because again, in, in these days of COVID, um, it's not easy to, to get in touch with people and also to get in contact with people face-to-face -face and to make sure that we're, we're being diligent um, in, in the coursework. So this just gives you an overview as to what you're, ex you're expected to do and what you expect the environment to be because not a lot of students have taken online courses before. Um, I have, um, as a student, I also helped to set up uh, online courses from years ago, so I'm quite familiar with the format. Um, but you know, if I look back at my days when I was in university, if I took an online course, the courses that I thought were really gonna be easy, I'd get an A and I didn't care, I never got an A because I never put the time in. It was all about the time that you put in. And that's the one catch with this course. There's a pattern. There are those students who do really well, and get A's. There are those who are the B's in the middle. There are those who are the C's and D's and failing. And the C's and D's all the time are the ones who don't put the work in, who don't show up for assignments, who don't read their stuff on time, wait to the last minute. Um, you know, they think they can get stuff done, but sometimes they can't um, in terms of a timeline and they're squeezed. Well, sir, I'm sorry, I missed that. Can I please have an extension, have this, have that? And we, we can't. Um, and that's the challenge. Although I want to be flexible and pliable, some things I can be flexible in, some I cannot. For example, the online discussions, whereby you have deadline dates for the online discussions, you must complete them in time. They close after a certain date, and I can't open them back up again, and I can't change the way it's graded. It's graded from within the system. There's a rubric. I mark it according to 
um, what you did for your post. It looks for certain things. Did you reply? Did you expand upon it? Did you, um, you know, add some meaning, meaningful value to your comment? Putting, oh, that was a really good post about what you, what you said there. That's not good enough. That's a great post about your identity and your background. I didn't know you're from India. Okay, that, that's not enough. That's a great post about your background. I didn't know you're from India. Maybe you're Gujarati or maybe you're Hindu. I learned this about, you know, Hindu people and it was so amazing to, to hear from you. And this is, you know, what I think is a, is a real good contribution. Something like that, that has a little more depth that you, you're, you're talking back to the individual will get you top marks. But just one line answers aren't going to give you marks. You get maybe one or two points out of 10 for, for online discussions. The point of an online discussion is to keep you guys engaged as uh, classmates and get to get to know one another on the topics that we want to cover for the course. And if you're not participating, um, you know, it's hard for you as a classmate to be able to respond to me if I don't put any messages up. So some students are eager. They go in and they post in advance and some students wait to the last minute. Well, how can I respond back to your post if you're waiting to the last minute? So please try and get those things in um, as quick as possible and make sure that you're engaging in the work. Because the students who generally don't, I'm telling you, every semester I've been teaching this course for five, six years now, it's the same thing. The students who are complaining about marks generally are the ones who have not done the work. All right? There's a pattern. We can check to see if you've logged in. When you logged in, you know, when you were in class, it was a bit different because you're seeing people face to face. Um, but now even more so with it being digital, there's a tracking of kind of everything you're doing. When you log in, how much content you saw, you know, did you read the, the assignment? I can check those things, right? And if you're not logging in, you're not reading the assignments, that just tells me there's a pattern there whereby the person is not taking the time to be diligent in, in getting the work done in a timely fashion. Okay? So that's basically it about the overview. And then we should have a checklist, I think, next. Yeah, and then there's a checklist. So are there any questions about this part of the overview thus far? I'll take some questions now if anybody has any questions or comments or any, any information they would like to know more about. So are we all okay with uh, with the initial information? Everybody's okay? We're all good? Okay. Okay, so course outline. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, seeing in the text message chat there. Okay, so course outline. This is your overall outline of the course, which talks about what you're going to learn, how long it is, the description, what skills you'll get, right? The assignments here, you have a proposal, a report. That's the big part of the, the uh, this, these first two items here of the, uh, the semester. You have a midterm test and a final test. They're worth 25% each. Then you have all the discussions we we're talking about. You have four discussions where you must post and then reply to a classmate, okay? This is any accommodations that are needed, use of dictionaries, right? School policies, course policies, and prior learning. If you want to get assessed or some students will say they don't want to take the course, although this course is mandatory, they say that, you know, they can show that they've had prior learning, meaning that they've had life experience or skills or maybe another degree from somewhere that might grant them exemption. You can put in for that process for any course and then the school will evaluate that. Okay, so that's basically our outline. We then have what's called a 13 week topical, which shows you week by week what you need to do. So every week is a layout of what's happening. So right now you guys are supposed to do an introduction. That's week zero, so to speak. So up to today, you should have done these things. Then we're starting week one today. And then next week, you're gonna have a discussion post. So right now your introduction discussion post is due. It's due by next week. So sometime between this week and next week, please go in and put an introduction. There's no mark to that, but at least this way you guys can get to one get to know one another. You can practice doing your, your discussion posts. Week two, we'll get into social analysis. Week three, we'll continue with social analysis. And then your first official mark post is due. Some people start that post the week before. Um, you can go ahead and do the post from this week. So it gives people time to get in and respond to the second week. Okay. Then we have media literacy. We have our second post due which talks about media, okay? And then after that, we have our first assignment due, which is going to be the um, group proposal. You're gonna to propose to, uh, to us what you want to do as a project. I will upload some new documents that are not there right now. Um, I'd like you guys to get into it first. 
I will add a document showing you a sample report, a good report that was handed in. I still use this report as an example. It was from my very first class that I taught um, five, five, six years ago um, from a group of students who, who did a really good job at um, doing a proposal. Um, they went all the way out in terms of doing a really good presentation. They also uh, made t-shirts. Um, actually, let me go grab the t-shirt. I think, I think I still have it. Give me a quick second here. Now, I'm not expecting you guys to go out and make t-shirts, right? But I just wanted to show you the kind of work that's done. If you can see my chat window, can you guys see me in the chat window? Like my video? Yes, okay. So there we go. So there's the t-shirt that they made, right? You guys can see that. Stop sweatshops, act now, save lives. They were doing about sweatshops in Bangladesh. So as an example, they wrote a letter to the government. They wrote a letter to Walmart. They did a petition online. They made t-shirts. They put up posters. That's real action. Now, you can't do all of that because you're not um, you know, in class on campus. Now, that's like a top grade A paper. They went above and beyond. I've had a few people do that over the years. Not that that's what's expected, but it just gives you an example of the kind of work, if you want really good marks, what can be done. And part of it is enjoying the work that you're doing, understanding the work, and you know, being moved and being passionate about it. At the end of the day, this is real world, real life stuff. We're living in an age now whereby we're seeing a lot of protests. We're seeing a lot of discomfort in society. And this is what this course is about, addressing those inequalities. So this gives you a chance to actually put into action your passion, um, if you have one, or, you know, um, things, topics around the world that should be important to you. Um, you know, and we're not choosing. You guys are choosing your topic as a group. You're coming together and do it. Um, now, group work is difficult at its best times, never mind at its worst times, um, because it's getting people to agree to something um, is always a challenge, but it can be successful and rewarding. Remember, it's a skill, an employment skill you're learning because anywhere you go to work nowadays, they're expecting you to work in, in teams and function in groups um, and to be able to, to work with others. So that's a skill that you have to learn and work through. Okay. So your proposal will be due in week, week five, whereby you'll propose what topic you're going to address. So you have five weeks to get into it. I will pose a list, um, post a list of possible topics that you guys can go through. Usually we would discuss those topics in class. Um, but of course, not having a uh, face-to-face -face class, there's not that discussion. So I'll give you a list of topics you can choose from, but it's up to you to modify the topics and make sure they're specific, okay? So um, after that, um, first assignment's due, we'll move into the midterm, whereby you'll do um, the test. I'll give you five days to do it. Usually it's one or two days. Um, I like to take into account the weekend because some people work during the week or busy and have set their schedule as such, and it's a little tough doing the exam during that week. So you have the weekend to do it. There's five open days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's going to open at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning and close at 11 o'clock at night on the last day. Um, so you have more than enough time to do it. If you don't get it done, that's on you. It should be, you know, you should be able to get that done. There's no outside interference in terms of someone else taking a test for you or opening and reading your book or looking at uh, other notes. It's supposed to be a test that you're taking, again, looking at academic integrity um, on your own in front of the computer. Um, there are some things that we have in place you have to do, such as using a certain browser and whatnot. Um, but uh, that first midterm will happen um, between those days. If you have any challenges with the timeline because of whatever else is going on in your life, please email me in advance with whatever the reasoning is and we can have a discussion and I can try to be as flexible as possible in, in order to uh, assist you in making sure that you can sit the, the, the test. Also, those who have any kind of learning challenges, um, who have registered with uh, the Center for, for um, Students um, with Disabilities, we will give you more time or whatever is needed, any accommodation for the test. But please just check in with them and have them send me an email or you can send me an email with your request and I will um, take that into consideration most definitely and give you the, um, the resources and or time or whatever accommodations needed to make sure that you have what's needed for the midterm. Okay. Then we move into week seven, which is uh, towards the end of October. Um, we get into identity. You'll have in the second week, um, your post on identity. Basically, you're, you're, you're looking up some images and you're posting about that image and that image has to kind of represent who you are. You're talking to, to us about who you are and how your identity is formed. You get into some topics such as ascribed 
and um, and um, oh, no, I'm drawing a blank in two terms. Uh, a subscribed identity and uh, another part of your identity, but also it's uh, sorry, assigned and ascribed. And then you'll get into the various parts of how your identity is formed, right? And um, that part of the um, uh, the identity section, you'll look at intersectionality, which is the various parts that intersect um, to make you who you are. So, for example, um, I am a, a black male um, that's that's a Christian. I was largely raised in North American society from the Caribbean. So I also have different intersectionality, and I have to know my blind spots. Part of that in, in your identity. Um, helps you to look at your background for how you came to where you are today and uh, how identity is constructed through social constructionism and through you know interaction with family members and community members you'll discuss that and the two parts of identity there we go is ascribed identity and achieved identity through what you achieve through your um, requirements and your ascribed is what things were given to you such as your hair color your eye color where you were born your parents all those things that um, you didn't choose. Those are things that um, kind of ascribed or given to you um, at birth, and some things you will create throughout your life span to determine who you are. So you'll get into a discussion on that in that week there, which is due on November the sixth. All assignments are due on the Fridays at at uh, eleven o'clock, um, and then I start to look at them and mark them on the Saturdays and Sundays. If you do need an extension, ask for it in advance. State your reason why. If your reason is valid, I will definitely grant you an extension. Um, I have no problem with doing that as you know, people have challenges and things that come up in life, but um, please try to do so in advance. Um, if it's last minute or day of or after the fact, then to me that speaks of you're not being prepared. So please um, try and, and, and connect with me in advance because communication is the most important thing in terms of meeting deadlines, not just with myself, but also with your classmates, okay? Then you'll get into equality and equity and uh, power and privilege. And then your your um, social analysis report is then due, um, which is the initial proposal that you did back here in week five, stating this is what we're going to do. We're going to continue to work on that proposal. This is for me to check on how you're going to structure your, your overall um, analysis. And then um, you're gonna work on that throughout all these weeks, and then you're gonna hand it in in week 10. So you have five weeks to do your proposal and five weeks to do your overall project report. That's a group report with you working together with all your your uh, your group mates, and then one person hands in one assignment, um, which then represents the whole group. Then you'll have your last discussion post, which will discuss equity and equality, and then we'll have the final exam again, which will open on the Saturday and close on the Wednesday. And then I have to get those marks in at the end of the week, and your class will then close for this particular semester. Okay. So this is an overview again to keep you in line and, uh, and see what's going on from week to week. There's also a link to each of these items. So you can click on final test and it will show you and explain already in advance what the final test looks like. We will do a review class for like this, going through some of the questions for the final exam and for the midterm. And we'll do one for the assignment as well. So we'll have another three classes like this. Um, again, not mandatory, but for you to ask any questions or to go through any um, uh, any um, issues that you may want to address with me, okay? So this is the midterm, as you see here, going through the same thing like the, like the, the final, and then this here will be the, the browser and how to set up a secure browser, right? So we were into assignments. So this is evaluation scheme and course schedule, which is where we were just at, final test. And then this is the online discussions. It explains the different posts and the various posts are here. Click on each one, it'll take you to that particular area whereby you have to make this discussion. And then this is the marking. Initial post, 20 points, follow up 10 points. So again, you make a really good post, but if you put the one liner, you'll get this response excludes any essential components, does not connect with the student's post, it's just basically addressing minimally. Hi, that was really a great post you did today. That's it, you'll get this, right? If you have a little more discussion, you'll get more points. So it's based on this rubric, this marking scheme is based on how you respond to the person's initial post, okay?
And we'll get to this. One. So this is a um, week by week schedule again, showing you what we just did for the topical with links. But again, it's just listed here, so you can quickly get through them. Week one, two discussion board. Week three, first discussion is due. Week four, second discussion. Week five, proposal. Week six, midterm. Seven, break. Week eight, discussion board. Nine, break. Ten, reports due. Right. Eleven, uh, discussion break. Twelve, break, which is preparing for the final exam and then final. So it's a quick overview. You can see what to do here. Multiple ways to show you weekly what you have to do, so this way you don't get off uh, off track. And then again, this is just the evaluation schemes here, showing you what we were walking through each section. These were the midterms looked at. We looked at the online discussion. Now this is the project proposal and the report. So this is the proposal explaining to you what you have to do. I will, like I said, go over this um, right before you have to uh, do the assignment by having a, a class just to go over it. One person submits to this folder online for the whole group. Here's the evaluation scheme. The tricky thing with this first initial proposal is it's a group proposal, but there's also a research component that's done individually, and you're marked individual. So these marks here, the language and convention, identifying the overall problem and how you're going to tackle it, that's done as a group. So that's 30 points. So people who don't participate sometimes will get maybe 20 out of 50 because they're going to get some points here because you worked as a, on a, on, as a group. The person does no work at all. They'll get zero, of course. But if they did a bit of work and they didn't hand in their personal assignment, then they'll get zero for this part of it. Okay? And we often see that sometimes where group members are not participating from the very onset. I will not hesitate that if someone is giving too much problems to remove them from the group completely and deal with them individually um, so that you don't have ongoing problems. Or we may leave them in the group and they don't participate anyways until they figure out that they want to get around to participating and I will deal with them. But again, you have to communicate with me what the problems are ongoing. We ask you to use the discussion boards that are set up for it. You don't have to and a lot of people don't like using the boards. You can use WhatsApp. but in the event of any challenges with group members, you must provide proof as to your communication, as to the challenges you are having. So if you're using email, I'll ask you to forward me the email thread. If you're using WhatsApp, I'll ask you to send me screenshots. So the person who's giving challenges or problems, right, you can inform me and also include that person. If you're gonna complain about somebody, always include them in the complaint so they know what's happening and they have a chance to defend themselves. Sometimes it is what it is. The truth is the truth. If that person is not doing the work, there is no defense. So just make sure that you're diligent in keeping some sort of track of when you guys are getting together, whether you're using WhatsApp chat group, whether you're using um, email threads, whether you're using the discussion board that's here. It's up to you. But please make sure that um, you, know, you provide that information so I can check what's happening so I can know that um, you guys um, uh, were having whatever challenges and, and where the problems lie. My goal is not to kick someone out or punish someone. It's to help assist you guys function as a group. And sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't, right? But just feel rest assured that we do know that groups are problems. And, um, uh, you know, we will work towards solving those problems so that everybody can have um, a good semester and, and have uh, good marks. Now, I've stressed this challenge or problem a lot because it is the biggest problem we're seeing. I don't want to scare you off and make you think that it's terrible or you're going to get a terrible group. Not at all. There are some groups that do amazing things and function really well as well. But that's just the biggest area we find that's a problem. So we want to address it so that if we can tackle it up front, we can make sure we're doing well with that area. This, again, as part of the proposal, each person must do their own annotated bibliography. Really quickly, you'll go through it again later. But an annotated bibliography is you have to go through a research um, you know, paper or a news article or something that you're using as a reference. So you're using that reference to back up your area. So let's just say you were doing it on you know, persecution of Muslims in, 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 in certain parts of India, right? You might have an article that talks about that and saying why this is a bad you know, issue for the world, so to speak, or for India. And you have to then look at the article and say, what has the article missed? Is there omissions or gaps or problems that you identify with the article? If you're not saying that, you're not doing a good job assessing the article. Your job is to assess the article for your research, okay? So was the article good? Did it have main arguments? What was the conclusion that was made by the author? Sometimes conclusions are incorrect or they're not um, deep enough in terms of getting into the issue. It's just on the surface. Your job is to analyze that piece of reference material 
because that reference material you will use for your overall report. So the job here is each person must go through this annotated bibliography for one article on their, on their own. So if you have five group members, I expect one project with an overall introduction, with an overall analysis of what you're going to use, what tool you're going to use, and how you're gonna break down the issue, what the issue is, and then a conclusion as to how you think you'll tackle the problem. And then you're gonna tell us what each group member did to, um, to work in the group. And then finally, each person will submit their annotated bibliography. But that annotated bibliography will be one from each person. So inside that one document, it'll have those four pages I just mentioned, as well as one page from each member. So you're expecting somewhere like a nine page document because you're gonna have three, you know, two, three, four pages from the group, and then another five pages, one from each person. So if I only get two, only two people will get the full marks, okay? So that's kind of how this initial um, analysis pr proposal works. And then you'll take that proposal and you'll finish it off in a full report five weeks after that. And you will uh, break down introduction, analysis, conclusion, and use the research parts we just talked about as part of the overall project, okay? It should be anywhere from about seven to 12 pages. It can be longer. I've had some as big as 20 pages because people might space it out more or write a little more. It's okay to have longer, just it shouldn't be four or five pages. If you think about it, seven pages with a group of five people is not hard to do. That's a page per person. And you should be able to write that across, um, you know, across five weeks, five weeks of work, okay? So this is again, the marking scheme for, the, for that final project. And you'll notice here, which again, people miss group organization. Uh, maybe I'll help you with a chart this time. But um, you know, you have to tell us who did what and how that work went. Some groups forget this completely and they don't say anything at all as to how the group worked and who did what, and they lose points, right? So this is a lot of points to lose 10 out of 100. It's a lot of points to lose just because you did nothing or you didn't document how your group functioned, okay? So please ensure that you're looking at that. Once again, I'll go over these things as the semester goes, um, goes through, but this is just in a high level overview, okay? So that's basically your, uh, your four or five um, assignments, things that you have to do for the, for the semester. They're again, broken down to sections. So when you come here to course outline, you have your assignments in one folder, you have your overview in another folder, you have the discussions here in another folder, you have the group work in another folder, and you have your tests in another folder. So that's basically the, uh, the course for work that you have, and that's how you're to, to go through each, uh, each of those sections for an overview. Is there any questions on the overview and what's to ex be expected for the semester? There's um, one group assignment. Somebody's asking how many group assignments are there? One group assignment has two parts. So the two parts of that assignment are, you see here under group work, you'll have to do the social analysis proposal, right? And then you have to do the report. So they're, they're the same project. This is, you're gonna tell us what you propose to do, and this is you finishing off that proposal, okay? The groups, good question, someone says, do we choose the groups ourselves or do you choose the groups? The groups are chosen by the computer system. So as soon as you signed up for the course, you're put into a group. How do we check that? We go to, course, sorry, we go to um, communication and groups. And if I have to adjust some people, sometimes I have to adjust one or two, I can do so. Right now, you're all in groups of five. This class is full, depends on your section. I'll go to the other sections in a, sec in a second. Five people in a group. Five, seven different groups. So you'll pick your topic according to what your group de uh, decides. And uh, that's your group for this semester. So for example, I click on this, it'll show me the five members who are in this particular group for this class, okay? You can reach out to those members directly yourself and communicate uh, with them to be able to form your group using the discussion, um, discussion board or communication discussions. See. Uh, response form see here social analysis group project so you can do the group discussions right here so you can go ahead and, and, and use this as a tool to communicate this way if there's any problems it's right there you don't need to submit anything to me you just say we're having problems with our group so and so has not been responding I log in and I check what's going on right here if you choose to use a different method then obviously you have to provide the proof for me okay but it's up to you I would recommend using the discussion board not all groups like to work that way but that's actually the easiest and the best way to work a lot of students who are international prefer, um, uh, um, prefer WhatsApp, and that's cool too. A little more work to be done there. But again, 
um, up to you however you want to administer that, right? So the groups are already set for you, and that's where you would do your discussions. You go to communication and groups, and you'll see right now who's in your, in your groups for, for, the, for the semester for the project you have to work on, okay? Any other questions around groups for anybody? Okay, there's no other questions about groups. Okie dokie. Um, let's take a quick look at, oh, no, no questions. Okay, good. Everybody's good on that. Let's take a quick look at one of the week's contents. You have an overview every single week. And it gives you an introduction and a video. The second topic is the, is the course lesson. So this gets into what you're learning for that week. All right, and then the third part is a summary and review. It has a matching game just to test your knowledge to see how well you did. So what is a subsidy? One or more barriers that a country places under another country. No, that might be a trade sanction. So you drag and drop it there. What's cultural appropriation? The act of taking on or making use of some non-dominant culture without the authority to do so. What's a subsidy? A sum of money granted to a state or republic to help keep the price of commodity low. Not a republic, a state that a public uses unable to result domination of the economy. And a cash crop, a crop produced for its commercial value. Let's check to see how good I did. There we go. Got them all right. If you got one wrong, <clears throat> I'll tell you incorrect. I'll ask you to go back again and do it. Okay. After you do that uh, quick review at the end, you'll go to a quiz if you, if you want to. And you'll just answer some questions on the quiz to practice to see how well you did um, learning the key terms for that uh, particular, um, particular um, section. It's just five quick true or false questions. I'm in this as professor mode. That's why you're seeing it this way. I'm going to switch to being a student like you guys. <coughs> so let's go back to content. Week one. And it tells you what you've looked at along the way as a student. So you're knowing that you're progressing through the course. So week one, I was at the summary review. Again, I, I had done the matching terms, that's fine. You can always do them again. And then here's my quiz. Go to my week two practice quiz. And there's the quiz. Start quiz. For those of you who have not used eCentennial um, testing before, this is just one page part. There are multiple page parts for your midterms and finals. When you submit, don't submit the whole test, just submit the page, they're in pages. This one, <coughs> you can submit the whole quiz because it's only five pages. If it was more than that, we have submit the page. You make them one page at a time. So you have to answer these questions, go through, let's just say, we did this, I'm not looking at these, I don't know how good I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna click these and see. And then you hit submit quiz. All right, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna submit the whole quiz? Some students actually submit and they haven't finished it because sometimes you have like 30 or 40 questions. You're doing it as pages. This one is okay because we're finished the whole quiz. Submit the quiz, it's gonna tell you how you did. I got four out of five, I missed one, okay? And then it doesn't tell you what you what was right and what was wrong, it just tells you you got your grade whatever overall, okay? That's the only unfortunate part about it. It doesn't show you exactly what you got wrong. Go back to content. That's basically it. So every single week will be structured the same. Week one, week two, week three, week four, same kind of idea. Overview, lesson review, and it's an easy way for you to walk through each section when you have your discussion poster right here, right? Midterms here as well links back to the, the midterm on identity. Let's go back to the other one. There's a discussion as well. So the discussions are linked right in there. <laughs> and your assignments are as such as well. 
So pretty straightforward. When you come into the section here and you want to go back to the news, there's no news link here. The only way to go back to the news and the home page for this section is not by clicking home. If you click home here, this takes you back to the home of eCentennial with all your courses. So these are all my courses. <laughs> so I go into this one course. This is my home page for that particular course with the introduction, <clears throat> as well as the calendar. The calendar has all the due dates in there. It gives me what I haven't read. Well, me, it has enrollments because I'm a professor. You guys wouldn't have that. But um, you can now see when all your deadlines are. <clears throat> so there's a number of ways to show you your deadlines. There's the calendar, there's the weekly, <coughs> there's the news. Excuse me a second. <coughs> Sorry about that. There's the, um, the news, there is the topical, and there is the weekly schedule. So you've got four different ways telling you where assignments and deadline dates are. So there's really no excuses for saying you missed a deadline date or didn't know something was coming up. I get it every semester, no matter how much I've done this, there's always somebody says, well, you know, we're now in our third post and I didn't do any posts at all. I didn't know we had to do posts. I, I just don't understand. I don't get it because it's all here laid out for you um, in not one way, in many, many ways, because we want to make sure that students are seeing it. They're not missing it in one way or another. There is the calendar, like we said here. You can click on one of the dates and it brings up the calendar. And if I click on um, here, I can see you know, any event here or I can click on the date and it shows it to me in the calendar format. This right now is in a listed format. This is now going to show me the calendar overall here. And I can see the dates. See the dates there. That's the next due date for that one. Due date, due date, due date, due date. All the due dates are here. All right. And we can see them here as an individual calendar. So there's really no excuses for not being able to know when stuff are and, 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 and get stuff in on time. This is a monthly view. So you can see it again. This is as a list view lists all the things when they're due. So you have a list here, you have a list in your content, you have a list in the sections, you have a list in assignments, you have it in Newsweek. So it's four different ways every single week you're getting where and what assignments are due and how to see your assignments, right? Topical, again, all right, we went through this and also in our weekly listing. There's assignment schedule, there's a weekly listing schedule. Uh, I missed it, sorry. Um, assignment due dates, here it is. See, as well, all the weeks when it's due, just not the date beside it. So there's multiple ways to see that. But back to what I was saying previously, if I want to go back to the home page of this section, there's no easy way to go back here except for clicking on the title. This title here takes you back to the home section where the news are and the calendar. Okay, there we go. So back to the so you click on that, same thing right in there. It takes you back to the same place you already had anyways. And that's where you have your introduction and your news posts weekly and also your calendar. Okay. So hopefully that gives everybody a good grounding of how to use the Centennial as well as where all the resources are. Also an overview of the course, how the course is laid out weekly, what your assignments are due, and your group discussions. I will, like I said, post one other thing on group work at another time. We'll add a few more things here into group work um, as we go. I will add um, an example of a report. I'll add the listing of uh, the assignment uh, topics. And I'll also add just some uh, overview ground rules on how to work in a group, Okay, just to make sure that you all have proper, um, proper information helping you in, in doing the group work. So that's basically it. That'll bring um, uh, that'll bring it to a close. Somebody's asking how many attempts we have for the quiz practices. I think you have one attempt, but I can open it up to be more attempts. Let me check quickly. Um, communication. No, sorry, quizzes. This is just one course as well. I have to check the other ones. Um, edits. Attempts again, uh, restrictions. Restrictions here. 
I'm not sure. I have to, I have to look into a little more for you. Um, I forget where that is. assessment is on assessment. I think there, you can set it for one time or multiple times. I'm not seeing where that is. Bad results. There's somewhere it says usually multiple attempts. One attempt. Here, sorry, here it is. Okay. Attempts allowed unlimited. See so it's not one. So you can take it as many times as you want. You can take it over and over and over till you uh till you're comfortable with with um how to do that one. Okay. So you can take the the quizzes many times. I knew it was somewhere here, just sometimes jogging my brain where these settings are. <laughs> Okay. And again, you can go in and practice from the quiz page at any point in time. Um, oh, it's locked now. Hang on a second. It automatically saved the password. I have an automatic password on it. That key tells me it's locked. One second. I want to take that off because then you guys won't be able to get in to do it. Uh, restrictions. And there's the password. No password. Delete. Yeah, see, so that little key is gone. These here are, are just symbols that tells me how the setting is. So these are open and unlimited. You can do them as many times as you want, okay? And you don't have to go in, in, in order to do the quiz. You can do it at any point in time. But again, they are laid out in a weekly format, so you can step through the course content to understand what you're doing. For the eager beavers who want to work ahead, we haven't changed it, whereby some classes have suggested that we block these off so that you only see them one at a time. But, um, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, some people like to work ahead and see all the content for the semester, so I usually leave it open. Um, but uh, one of the things I want to add, which I haven't done yet, I'll see how the semester goes, is a checklist weekly just to say what things you should be checking through um, throughout the week. We do have one here for the, uh, the outline overview, but I don't have one in every single week. I think that's something I'll work on this semester and add to the overall uh, overall course. I add certain things myself that I think are valuable, um, you know, as I've gone through being a professor over the years. Um, just to help students so you find little things or different things are in here that I've added from compared to maybe other courses um, or, or maybe your friends who are taking the course just because I think sometimes it helps. So any value I can add to uh, assist students in, in being more helpful, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Okie dokie, so that brings it to a close. Um, I will leave it open for another minute or two for any questions or comments um, and then we can begin to shuffle off. I will record, I will take this recording and post it online and I'll post it back to the news groups of all the different uh, sections. So for those who missed it or those who wanna um, look at it again at any point in time for a point of reference, you can have this video. So are there any final questions before I bid you all adieu? Will there be a Zoom meeting every single Monday? Um, no, there'll be only, um, uh, that's what's called a synchronous class, means that you have a class every Monday. Um, we don't, we're not doing that, they didn't ask us to do that. I will do four Zoom meetings, this is the first one. I'll do one on the assignment. So when the assignment's about to be due before it's to be handed in like that week, I will do a Zoom on that Monday. Then the next Zoom after that will be the midterm. So right before the midterm, that Monday before it's due the next week, I'll do another one of these Zoom classes to be able to answer any questions. The next Zoom one after that will be for the um, the, the final exam. I will post all those um, as well in a, in a listing. I'll make a, a new insert item to say what Zoom classes we can have, okay? Um, there's no specific online schedule. Um, I'm not understanding that person's question, but like I said, the schedule is, um, so that was from, J, J, uh, from Jay. So Jay, the online schedule is that you have to follow the weekly schedule. Um, you have to go through it yourself and figure out what's best for you as to how you work out the content for the week. So for example, the weekly topical shows you what you must do every single week. Okay. So here it is here. Please go through this and make sure you're reading through this because this will answer your question as to um, when the, the weekly schedule is due for what week and what the deadlines are and what you have to do every single week, okay? Um, the discussions are conducted online. So you have to go into here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm still as a student. I'll go to a student really quickly.
You're welcome, change command. Okay, so um, I go to communication, discussions. This is what you would do as a student. And then you could go directly to that discussion. So for example, introductions, and you could then post here to introduce yourself, All right? So if I want to reply, I can reply to this one. This is Gibby. I can then hit, uh, no, it's not allowing me to reply to this one. Here, let me try this one here. Then maybe student mode. Here we go, reply. Hi, my name is Gibby. This is my second year in culinary management program. I can reply to this thread. Okay, and then I post that, and that's you know my reply. It's a simple introduction reply. We want deeper replies on the other topics, but for now, click hello or reply to some people is fine. Okay, and I can look at the other posts here, right? Online discussion posts. Which one do I want? Social analysis, and then you post on your social analysis. Start a new thread. And you post that there. Okay. So that's how you post for the discussions, or you can go to content. And then let's just say I happen to be working on week three this week. It's Monday. I've come in on Monday. I'm going to do my work this week. Okay. And then I'm going to go through this. Uh, sorry, let's say week, week two. Okay. So I'm going to go through this. I'm going to step to the first content the overview. I'm going to go through my lesson, I'm going to do my review. And then I'm going to say, okay, now I'm ready to give my opinion on social analysis. So I click on this right here, which will take me directly into that post, and I'll start a new post. And I'll go ahead, put my topic, and explain what I want for that particular week. So you can do week by week as well. You can go in directly from communication, you can go in from content, or you can go in directly from that weekly um, that weekly discussion. Okay? So that's how you get to the uh, to the discussion boards. And making sure you're doing those discussions. But again, it's all tied into the calendar and into the weekly schedule. Any other questions? Okay. One last thing grades. Please make sure to check your grades. I will try to get them in as soon as possible. Um, sometimes a little longer, but we will get them in within two weeks of each of the assignments. Okay. So as you do your assignments, you get your grades, just go and check them. You can go in here to say, oh, I go enter grades, but you'll see your grades. And then all your grades uh, will be listed there for you. Check on your grades on an ongoing basis after I post the marks to make sure that uh, you're staying up to date with your grades, okay? So this just shows me all the grades for everybody as I enter them one by one per, per subject, uh, you'll get them, okay?